Okay, let me just say a few words uh, uh, to, uh, to start the conversation. I'm very happy uh, to be doing this project. It's a very special project and uh, I've done it in several places and it's always uh, very fascinating to have a retrospect of Prokofiev sonatas. I see uh, the format which we uh, have because uh, we are very uh, pressed in time. So no really very much detailed conversation is possible. So what uh, I think, I see here a double kind of uh, double task. One is to give to you people who are listening a kind of a uh, panorama of Prokofiev's development. Uh, development uh, of his style, of uh, his piano writing, uh, probably connected with his life as much as we can discuss it. The second is to give some very, very general suggestions to the players. Uh, and that's uh, with, with an eye on the watch, unfortunately, but uh, that's what we have. Uh, okay, so Prokofiev wrote about this sonata that usually uh, uh, usually the composer puts uh, the designation of Opus 1 when he feels that this is a very, you know, a step from what he was doing before, the first mature work. Uh, but he said that, uh, in my case, uh, the first Senate Opus I was a, uh, still a very traditional one, and the real mm, change in my style started with Four Etudes Opus II. So Prokofiev did see this piece, which incidentally was not the first sonata he wrote. He wrote several sonatas in, in course of his kind of maturing, growing up. Uh, uh, he saw it as a traditional work. And so I would say that usual uh, requirements of a traditional uh, romantic sonata would apply here. One is to identify the character of each theme and to present each of them in, you know, in the mood of its own to contrast, to work with or against the other themes. Uh, and this could be done maybe better. I understand you are mm, limited by, uh, by the limited abilities of this piano and, uh, you know, I can testify <laughs> uh, on this. Uh, but anyhow, that's uh, the, uh, the first task. To, to the extent the piano uh, allows it. The second uh, thing, it is always very important in romantic music and especially maybe in Russian music, it is to carry on big melodic line without uh, 
without sectionalizing, uh, have a big sweeping line, and uh, in connection with this, to have also this melodic line being distinguished, being understood even when it is hidden in the middle, when it's hidden uh, in the texture. Uh, all this thing, pam, 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 pam. Uh, this could be done uh, perhaps better. So let us work on, on this for the short amount of time we have. So the first theme As you know, this phrase is presented three times. It is uh, done very often in uh, romantic music, just uh, to remind you uh, the uh, Schumann G minor sonata. Also, the first thing appears uh, in three big sentences and each of them uh, is progressively more intense. So, can we try to do it? Okay. Well, uh, you can start right here. So, maybe not... but. It's perfectly possible to, uh, to connect it physically with fingers, but if you find it difficult, well, use your pedal, but create a long melodic line. Yes, and uh, this kind of a questioning intonation. We need the top C, and if your hand is small and you cannot do, then uh, break the chord. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we need the the top C. Okay, uh, can we do it again, please? How would you describe this theme? What is its character? Um, uh, like a very, uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, it's just very melodic and very like smooth and. I c cannot hear you. Uh, very like melodic. Melodic, yes. Melodic is not a character. Melodic is kind of physical property, if you want. Uh, so, what will be character? Mood. A very like soft character. 
Uh, very, what? I don't know. No, I cannot hear you. Uh, very like soft, like calm character. Calm. Well, here I would not agree with you. Uh, it is preceded by a very stormy, loud uh, introduction. And although the first theme itself, uh, short introduction, uh, four bars, and although the, uh, the theme itself starts in piano, but it is growing afterwards in fort, and I would say that it must have this passionate, uh, not calm, but passionate, stormy, albeit maybe not stormy at the very beginning, but with the potential to develop. Can we try? Can we try from the beginning, please? Yeah, there is a ritenuto, and I think it uh, kind of helps to make a, a grand statement. Can I do from here, please? The next is a bridge theme, and how would you describe this character? Oh, from here. Yes. Um. Um, kind of all over the place because you're jumping. Through. Well, it's piano, it's gentle, you're, you're right. But at the same time, there is this breathless quality. And somehow volatile, flighty. So can it be light and f uh, flighty, okay? Please. Okay, can you start once again and be in the character from the first note, please? Yes, and what I said before, make sure we have yeah, right. right. Go, go. What's good? So it is. Uh, I would like it to go through the whole range. Okay, once again. The fifth finger, okay. Yes. 
so this is the new theme is probably the second theme, the second uh, juxtaposed uh, theme. How would you describe this? Hmm? Bold. More bold, than the last. bold, very good, very good, more assured. If the first uh, theme is uh, passionate, is not basically not confident, right? Uh, kind of stormy, searching. Here it's very bold. The problem with this is it's written in such a way that it can be done very uh, sectional. So, from the beginning you need to fight it. Right? To make a long statement. lines to follow both please once again Yes, and again, avoid, avoid it to be pam, 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 pam. Have a long line, please. Crescendo. Okay, okay, we must stop here, but this is one of, I think, important things which we have uh, in this sonata, this ability to carry a long melodic line. Okay, thank you.